So be mindful. I'm just trying to set up properly. So be mindful when you're doing this. If you're not gonna do, if you're not gonna wear a weight belt like we are right now, slowly go up with the weight, just so you know that you're not overstressing the lower back. Because remember, there is a lot of vulnerability in the lower back right now. So another reason why you want to make sure the core is nice and tight, as well as tighten that lower back throughout the entire movement. Make sure you're keeping the hamstrings nice and activated the entire movement. Because remember, we are over, we are overstressing those hamstrings. But remember to get that nice squeeze at the top of your movement. Very important. But remember, if you're not really using any type of waist belt, I would really, I would generally recommend using a waist belt when doing this type of exercise, just because, like I said, the lower back vulnerability. And I always try to get people to understand when we're doing anything with a belt on, the beautiful thing about wearing a weight belt is it allows you to keep that core engaged without having to tighten it more and more from just you contracting it. Once you contract the abs and then you tighten the weight belt, you naturally have those abs contracted. That's the beautiful thing about actually using a weight belt. And then also, remember, it's taking an unnecessary tension from that lower back. But like I said, with this particular movement, don't focus on going super heavy and loading the body with a lot of weight, because like I said, it can increase the chance of you getting injured. But do me a favor and make sure you try to work through the full range of motion and add a little bit of partial motions in there. A lot of people always like to clown people for doing partial reps, but partial reps actually do help develop and sculpt the muscle that you're trying to build. Very important to understand that. So if you're somebody that wants to challenge the body a little bit differently, add those partial reps in too. But let's get to this work, you feel me? I will kick this shit back down, right? I set it up to kick it back down, right? Yo, 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 yo. Oh, one underrated thing to do when you're starting to fatigue are those last three, four, five, six reps. You get a little bit more explosive with your movement. The last two, three reps, if you feel like you're really about to top out and pass out, I would rather you go at a, little, a faster rate or a faster pace is better to say. I would rather you go at a faster pace to get that rep out more so to try to keep it slow. Unless you're really trying to completely fatigue the muscle. But let's get it. I didn't say I was tired. I didn't say I was tired. Oh, so now we lying. No, I didn't say I was tired. What the hell did you say just now? No, so, so we and me you talk about this all the time. <laughs> For me, as we progress in the training, I get I feel better and better. That's another reason why I like the progressive overload aspect because I've noticed that when I personally tried to load so much weight at the beginning, I feel like it hindered me so much at the end of my routine. So now, that's why I'm more so, mainly when you're doing a new movement, we just came from hip thrust, now we're moving to stiff leg deadlifts. At this particular point, hamstrings were already activated through those hip thrusts. They're a little killed, but at the end of the day, because we're doing a different movement, I try to get the body prepared to understand that, hey, this is what we're doing now. And that's another reason why I personally prefer a lot of progressive overload. And then, like I said, too, it shows you when you, you, should, you should kind of scale back more so to keep moving forward. So a great example is if I didn't really feel comfortable from the last set, we might do that last set again with the same weight and then progress if the body feels comfortable. I'm real big on how the body feels throughout the workout. I'm big on that. So if I've noticed that I put on a little bit more weight that I'm trying to lift, and then I do notice that I'm starting to feel tension that I shouldn't feel. I'm big to start backing away immediately. I'll stop immediately what I'm doing. I'll take the weight off and then proceed from there. So that, like I said, this is another reason why I personally prefer, prefer progressive overload because I've noticed that's something that's helped me build longevity for sure. Because everybody knows, yes, I've had those little minor 
minor injuries here and there, but they've never taken me out to a course that I'm missing a large amount of time from the gym. All it did when I had those minor injuries or anything to that nature, it made me kind of restructure how I was training at the moment. Like maybe I was going from heavy lifting to basketball and because I love basketball, I, I start introducing movements that my body isn't ready for. Or it might be a point that I'm still in the process of overtraining and my body actually needs rest and I do the basketball scenario and then from there my body's saying, hey, back off, you're doing too much. So like I said, that's one of the main reasons why I'm more big on slowly going up with the weight more so than just jumping straight into the weight. I'm big on longevity. I'm only 32 years of age. I feel like right now, this is the perfect time for us to be in great shape and it's a lot easier for us to be in great shape now, but we still need to be aware and conscious of working towards longevity. We don't want to experience any type of injuries or any type of minor setbacks that for one, we might have to deal with for the rest of our lives because we do understand not all injuries are created equal. Some of us from doing too much, we experience injuries that unfortunately keep us out of the gym for a long period of time, or we may not even be able, to, we may not actually be able to perform the way we were performing before, or be able to move how we were able to move before. Because like I said, all injuries are created dif differently, and they should be assessed, at, assessed a little differently as well. But hey, we about to go back to this. It is what it is, man. Oh, Another set loaded. What happened? Another set loaded, you feel me? It is what it is. I don't feel like we did too much. If anything, we can kind of back down on the, on the sets. And that's why I like doing three sets of 15 sometimes because when you go up with the weight, obviously you're not gonna be able to do 15 reps, but let's try, to, let's try to get towards 12. Let's try to get towards 10. And this is why, like I say, at the top of the set, I'm more of a, as many reps as possible kind of guy because it might be a point that the body is well rested that it can max out 20 reps that you never thought you could do. But because of the three sets you did before, you did your, your top set, your body ready to get that work done. You feel me? So let's get it. Woo! I feel like the talking took more out of me than anything. Shoot. Talking. That's, for real, that's another reason why, for real, for a lot of people, always like, why you seem like you don't want to be bothered? Who the fuck want to be wrapping somebody up and you about to lift heavy ass weight? I'd rather focus on lifting the heavy weight. Once I get from under that weight and start lifting average things again, you good to go. That's a great example of how you know you can still progress up with the weight. We still haven't broken those 15 reps. Once you start breaking the 15 reps when you want to do 10, can barely do eight, you know we've taxed. But right now, 15 one too bad. We're gonna do another plate. 